Assalamualaikum. Uh, while listening to that introduction, uh, I have to confess that before I speak, I need to tell you what, in my mother's eyes, I am. And that will be the actual truth. Correct? I'm very fortunate. My mother is with me. She's 90 years old. And a very proud lady today. Uh, and I'm happy to have made her proud. And if you happen to meet her, within a few minutes she will tell you, and I have to use her words, Yakin Nayata. I can't believe it that my son, Bada Hoke, that he's become so big, but I didn't think he'd grow up so well. Sometimes I'd like to believe that it is, she's referring to my height, and her contribution is the genes to make this happen. But really speaking, this is not the reference she made to me even 10 years ago. 10, 15, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, no. But today, yes. And why so? Why was it? And what is it that has changed? in these years and on reflecting on that and I want to share a few of those reflections with you because I think they're very relevant. I had disappointed her many a time. Her first disappointment with her darling son who refused to leave India and go overseas because I wanted to be with her. She couldn't understand why, because all the opportunities were abroad, right? The intelligent went to the United States. The enterprising went to the Middle East. And those who were neither stayed back in those good old days. And her beloved son sat for medicine, I'm sure my good friend Dr. Martin is not aware, because his aptitude test said that he deserves to be a doctor. And refused the admission in Dr. Anamale University for dentistry. And instead, decided to Bachelor of Arts in St. Joseph's College and pursue a degree in law which I walked out on during the last exam because I realized that the law degree was not what I wanted to do. Who could have imagined 30 years ago that I'd be standing in front of this august audience as a president of Tally Solutions, a leading India probably amongst the leading product companies in the world, and actually leading the company's initiatives itself. At that point in time, the option to work in the software industry did not even exist. And dear friends, if we thought about the changes that the world has seen in the last 25, 30 years, we all know the kinds of changes staring in front of us are nothing. Businesses are changing, industries are changing. 
it is no longer fashionable or even okay to think that you would work in a company from start to finish of your careers. Once upon a time, it was hailed as something to be proud of. So what, what changed? What happened to this undecided kid? What was consistent and what was inconsistent? Was he sure of himself? Unlikely. Did the world think that he was going to become something? No. Did his family think he's going to become anything at all? What happened? And for that, and I believe that the qualities and that instinct, which is the guiding hand of the Supreme Being, plays an immense role in what we become. Doing what you enjoy doing. Saying no to things that don't sound right to you. <clears throat> and inculcating a sense of continuous learning, which is super critical. And, <clears throat> and in today's times, these are the only factors which will make us continue to be successful. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't labor on all the elements which worked, but all that I need to say, in this confused state of affairs which many of us have, and I'm called at many points in time to speak about how can I become an entrepreneur? What does it take for me to start my own business? How can I succeed? How can I get out of this, what I'm stuck at? It must be about your sales and marketing. Teach me a few tricks about sales. I'm very good at my work, but I don't get a promotion because of politics in the company. So therefore, I want to leave and start my own business. Familiar? In my journey, what I've discovered, and I want to share that with you, is that it is super important to find a company, which for me is a set of people. You, for me, are a company. So the place you work is a company, and that company has to have a purpose which is larger, and more than the purpose alone, it has to have values which resonate with you. And to my, to my surprise, I must say that when my company was merged with Tally Solutions, most people didn't think I'd be there for more than six months. I'm now 10 years there. The reason? Because most mergers don't seem to work. Most companies, most, most Entrepreneurs are in the hurry to make companies and sell them and make more companies and sell more companies. And I should be of the same grain. But I realized that here there was a company which was slightly different and appealed to me as a person. And what were those few things which appealed to me? First and foremost, one of the single most important values of this organization is to the extent that there would not be any papers signed with our partners, and we have over 10,000 of them, no legal agreements, to the extent that if the customer did not find value in the software, he could return it back anytime, no questions asked, to the extent that you could take leave and you could sign your own holidays, no questions asked. From people policy, customer policy, partner policies, trust was the fundamental design which the company worked on. 
And if you examine yourself deeply as a good Muslim, many times we ourselves are struggling with how can we be honest and how can we act on our honesty with integrity. And here there's a company owned by somebody who doesn't follow our faith, so to speak, but has a value which is actually executing on this value. And then, small things which impress me about the company. The owner of the company, in all my life, has inculcated the second value that people are most important and never ever speak behind somebody or speak ill of somebody. Sounds familiar? Whose values are these? Are they close to you? Hmm. I struggle with this value. Because it's so easy to speak about somebody and say, and to run a large organization of hundreds of people, you're bound to be frustrated. So the second most important element is strength of the organization is in its people. And about the value of people has been understood that every human being has been created to contribute. And it's up to the organization to get the best out of the human being. So all policies, processes, training happen with that kind of a framework. And the last, as what I mentioned, continuous pursuit of excellence, which goes back into how do you continuously learn? You're in a knowledge economy where your job is to continuously innovate. And having understood that, also realizing that one of the reasons which stops us from learning is when we think that we know everything, when our ego comes in our way. And on a continuous basis being humbled to say you don't know and it is okay not to know. That you're not defensive if you don't know. But yes, honesty comes most important. If you're honest with yourself, then you're willing to learn from anybody in the organization. Friends, these for me were important principles which I've learned from this organization. And as professionals who've got together today on this wonderful day, and I must acknowledge that I had no clue what to expect, leave, leave alone address you. And I'm humbled that on a day like today, that so many of you have come up to share, to learn, and to go back with some changes, some inspirations, and some commitments and I'm so happy for this moment. I'm so happy for the organizers to have got this, this event together. And I'm sure that we'll see many more events like these to make a difference. And, and inshallah, all that we need to do is to have confidence in ourselves, confidence in our beliefs. The roots are there. And God willing, we will prosper. And I, call this inauguration, call this event, and I'm not sure that I'm actually inaugurating this. I know, I'm sure that it's been already done, but for the function for the afternoon, look forward to a very interesting day coming ahead. Thank you.